Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss this example. So what we have C A B means set of all continuous functions defined on closed interval A B. Okay. Uh, so let me show you. Suppose this is y axis, this is x axis. We have some closed interval A B here, right? And this is a continuous function defined on closed interval A B. So it's a continuous function. Okay. So let me draw properly. So this is a continuous function on closed interval AB. So C AB is a set of all such continuous functions defined on closed interval AB. We have to prove it is complete matrix space with this matrix. Let us recall when we say the matrix space is complete, if every Cauchy sequence is convergent, then we say it is complete. So here also we have to prove every Cauchy sequence is convergent. Okay, in this matrix space. So what will I do? I will take any arbitrary Cauchy sequence and I will prove that it is convergent. So let us start. Let let f n be a Cauchy sequence. So actually, this is a set of functions, continuous functions. So obviously, the sequence will be a sequence of function. So this is the sequence of function, which is a Cauchy sequence in. This C close interval A B comma D. Okay, and we have to prove that it is convergent. So this is our final target. Obviously, I am going to use epsilon definition. So let us start with with one epsilon. Let epsilon greater than zero be given. Okay, so I am going to use this information. We have we have f n is Cauchy in this C close interval A B comma D. So let me explain the same thing with the help of this diagram. So here we have a sequence of functions, continuous functions. Okay, like this sequence of continuous functions like this, just like f one, f two, f three, and so on. Okay, and this is the sequence of Cauchy functions. This is sequence of functions which are Cauchy. That means they are coming very close to each other. Okay, very close to each other, and we have to prove that it is convergent. So this is our target. So with the help of diagram, we are trying to understand the meaning of it. It 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 will be just like this. Okay. So we have a Cauchy sequence. So let us use the definition of Cauchy sequence for given epsilon. Epsilon we have already taken. So let me mention for therefore for. Above epsilon greater than zero, there exists n belongs to set of natural numbers such that. See, we have a matrix D, so I will mention same D of f n comma f m less than epsilon for all n m greater than or equal to capital N, right? Small adjustment I am going to do instead of epsilon, I am going to write epsilon by two. This is the only difference. It doesn't matter. Epsilon means very small positive real number. Epsilon by two has the same meaning, so that's why definitely we can use here epsilon by two. What is the definition of d? This one supremum. So let us use the same definition here. So just tell me using this definition what what I supposed to write. Just try to say uh, supremum. Okay, supremum, supremum mod. F and G two functions we have right now we have F n and F n so F n of x minus F m of x right such that x belongs to closed interval A B it is less than epsilon by two okay with for all m n I am just simply copy paste for all m n greater than or equal to capital N right but see let us discuss one example suppose. Two, three, four, five, six. Any arbitrary numbers we are taking, and uh, whatever you fourteen, fifteen, whatever any numbers you can take, and we are talking about the supremum. So what will be the supremum of all these numbers? Two, three, fourteen, fifteen, six. So obviously the supremum is fifteen. If I say the supremum, okay, what what will be the largest is less than m. That means each of them is less than m. The supremum is 15, which is less than m. That means 2 is le less than m, 3 is less than m, 14 is less than m, 6 is also less than m. Each of them is less than m. What I want to say, if the supremum is less than epsilon by 2, that means each mod for each x 
it is less than epsilon by 2. So, therefore, I can mention, therefore, mod fn of x minus fm of x less than epsilon by 2. This is true for all x belongs to closed interval a b and I should carry this condition also for all n m greater than or equal to capital N. So, let me call it as 1. This is so much important thing. Understood? Supremum is less than epsilon by 2. So, each mod less than epsilon by 2. This is true for all x belongs to closed interval a b. Right? Now, what will I do? I will fix my x. Okay, just let me mention. Okay. We take some x naught belongs to close interval a b. So, what we do? We take any arbitrary point, but we fix it. Okay, suppose this is my x naught. We fix any arbitrary point from close interval a b. Then this is true for x naught also. Since it is true for all x, obviously it is true for x naught. So, I can write therefore mod fn of x naught minus fm of x naught, right? fm of x naught less than epsilon by 2 for all n m greater than or equal to capital N. So, right now no need to mention for all x since we have fixed the point. So, yes, if you fix the point, you will get a sequence of real number. Let us try to understand with the help of this diagram. So, see we have a very infinitely many functions which are continuous, but if you fix the point here, you will get f of x naught. Here you will get sorry here f1 of x naught here you will get f2 of x naught here you will get f3 of x naught here we will get f4 of x naught and so on that means in this way we get a sequence of real numbers since we are fixing a point okay fixing a point so that's why so it is looking like a function but if you fix a point you will get a sequence of real numbers okay so this is sequence of real numbers and this is definition of Cauchy sequence what is the definition of Cauchy sequence? Mod xn minus xm less than epsilon like that. So, the same type of definition we have. So, yes, just fn of x naught, but it represents a real number. So, that's why we can say it is a sequence of real numbers. So, therefore, fn of x naught is a Cauchy sequence in RDU usual distance mod is there. So, obviously it is a Cauchy sequence in RDU, but see in our previous videos we have already proved R is complete with usual matrix R is complete. That means every Cauchy sequence is convergent. Let me mention, but RDU is complete. Complete means what every Cauchy sequence convergent. So, this is Cauchy sequence. So, obviously it is convergent. Therefore, fn of x naught is convergent in RDU. So, it is convergent. This is also convergent since R is complete. If it is convergent, definitely it will converge to some point. So, therefore, and let me mention, and that fn of x naught will converge to some point alpha. It is a real number. Get it? But see, it depends on x naught. So, I should mention alpha x naught. Obviously, it is a real number, but see the value of alpha depends on x naught. That means if you take x naught here, the sequence will converge to some point here. But if you change the position of x naught, suppose if you take any arbitrary point x, then, then the point where the sequence is converging, that is also different. So, that is why alpha depends on x naught. This thing we are trying to say. This is true for this is true for all x naught belongs to close interval a b getting this is true for all x naught since our x naught is arbitrary see if it is true for x naught it is true for all x right uh, there is no more space to write just make a screenshot of it then we will go further so let us continue okay see purposely i have kept this statement one here this is so much important for us right so, this is true for all x naught. That means for each x belongs to closed interval a b, we will have f n of x converges to f of x. So, with the help of that alpha, alpha x, I am uh, going to define a function f. Now, we define 
ओके वी डिफाइन सो पॉइंट वाइज सो आई एम गोइंग टू डिफाइन दैट फंक्शन पॉइंट वाइज एफ फ्रॉम क्लोज इंटरवल ए बी टू आर एज एफ ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू दैट अल्फा एक्स एफ ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू अल्फा एक्स ओके सो विद द हेल्प ऑफ अल्फा दैट मीन्स फॉर ईच एक्स वी विल हैव सम अल्फा एक्स सो फॉर ईच एक्स वी विल हैव अल्फा एक्स सो आई एम डिफाइनिंग इन द सेम वे एफ ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू अल्फा एक्स ओके सो दे आर फोर दे आर फोर सो आई कैन राइट डायरेक्टली सो एफ एन ऑफ एक्स कॉन्वर्ज टू एफ ऑफ एक्स सो नाउ आई एम कॉलिंग दिस अल्फा एक्स और अल्फा एक्स नॉट एच एफ ऑफ एक्स सो इट कॉन्वर्ज टू एफ ऑफ एक्स फॉर ऑल एक्स बिलोंग्स टू क्लोज इंटरवल ए बी ओके सो इन दिस वे वी हैव कंस्ट्रक्टेड अ न्यू फंक्शन एफ ऑफ एक्स सो नाउ माई नेक्स्ट टास्क इज टू प्रूव दैट एफ इज कंटिन्यूस ओके सो नाउ वी विल प्रूव माई नेक्स्ट टास्क इज टू प्रूव एफ इज कंटिन्यूस दैट मीन्स एफ बिलोंग्स टू क्लोज इंटरवल ए बी एंड the sequence of function which we have initially taken fn converges to f in this matrix c close interval abd the matrix they have given okay in that matrix fn converges to f this thing we have to prove okay uh, see let us continue with this one so from one from one i will keep as it is so since i am going to write the same thing so that's why i am going to keep as it is just make a screenshot of it then we will go further see now what will i do i will apply the limit m tends to infinity let me mention letting m tends to infinity okay so if i take m tends to infinity what will i get mod fn of x will be as it is if you apply the limit m tends to infinity it will as i mentioned earlier that fn of x converges to f of x so obviously fm of x that is also converges to f of x so i can write f of x if you apply the limit it will go to f of x less than or equal to so this is a limiting value so that's why i should consider equality also in any case we will have equality also this is true for all x belongs to close interval ab and for all n greater than or equal to capital n m is not there since we have applied that limit right so let me call it as true this is also so much important thing right uh therefore mod fn of x minus f of x less than or equal to epsilon by 2 that means it is strictly less than epsilon since epsilon by 2 is less than epsilon so that's why i can write this for all x belongs to close interval ab for all n greater than or equal to capital n but see this is definition of uniformly convergent sequence this is definition of uniformly convergent sequence therefore fn converges to f uniformly on close interval ab okay so in the uh, theory of sequence of function okay sequence of function we have already seen fn this is definition of uniformly convergent sequence and it converges to f on close interval ab but they have mentioned but each fn is continuous on close interval ab right each fn is continuous and it converges to f uniformly therefore f is also continuous on close interval ab this is one result if fn converges to f uniformly each fn is continuous then f is also continuous so by that result i got therefore f belongs to c close interval ab so in this way we completed the half part we proved c belongs to ab that means sorry f belongs to cab that means the limit of that sequence of function that is also continuous function so the last task is to prove fn converges to f in this c close interval abd let us use two let me mention from two from two what we have from two mod fn of x minus f of x less than or equal to epsilon by 2 for all x belongs to close interval ab and for all n greater than or equal to capital n okay just make a screenshot of it then we will go further so what we have got here okay what we have got mod fn of x minus f of x less than or equal to epsilon by 2 and this is true for all x for all x belongs to close interval ab 
each of them okay is less than epsilon by 2 so that's why their supremum is also less than epsilon by 2 so therefore i can mention supremum of their supremum mod fn of x minus f of x so you can take any x belongs to closed interval b their supremum is less than or equal to epsilon by 2 okay their supremum is also less than epsilon by 2 but see epsilon by 2 is less than epsilon I should carry this condition for all n greater than or equal to capital N. So therefore, supremum of mod fn of x minus f of x, I should write here x belongs to close interval a b, that is less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital N. So did you notice one thing? This is nothing but d of, okay, that definition of d we have got here. So therefore, d fn comma f definition of d right less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital n so this is definition of convergent sequence so therefore fn converges to f in c close interval a b comma d def definition of convergent sequence right so we started with cauchy sequence we stated initially we consider fn is a cauchy sequence in c a b comma d and we proved it is convergent. Therefore, every Cauchy sequence is convergent in C close interval AB comma D. Therefore, every Cauchy sequence is convergent in C AB comma D. So, therefore, we can declare it is a complete matrix space. Or I will mention hence the result or whatever the statement we have written. Therefore, it is a complete matrix space since every Cauchy sequence is convergent. Okay, so the solution is over. Make a screenshot of it. Then we will stop. Thank you. See you in next video.